We're now ready for the next question. We'll begin here. Thank you. I would like to revisit the topic of city finances. From your viewpoint, what is the city's current financial picture and how do you propose to manage city finances so that taxpayers are getting their money's worth? Right now, uh, I see the current city finances uh, at a low point. I don't, uh, I don't see that city way down in the toilet. And uh, the only way I see it coming out of it is to eliminate some of the debt, which was mentioned earlier. You know, why pay uh, $8,000 rent on a police station when we already own a building to put it out of a police station at? We never should have moved in the first place. You know, it, we, it shouldn't have happened. You know, we, you know, we, so building we you know we sold the building that we had eight eight million dollars invested in and uh, you know for only a million and a half and we should you know that was generating the income for it we should have got rid of it uh, so my proposal would be uh, you know just to cut cut a lot of wasteful spending try not to raise taxes and just uh, you know just just try to collect what taxes we can and. Uh, you just manage them, you know, just, just manage the money to, uh, effectively. You know, if, you, if you manage your money effectively, you can, you, you can, make, you can make it. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to blow it in. I mean, you know, the, the, city, the city got a large stream of income coming in. I mean, just, uh, you just manage it properly without, the, without throwing it away, without blowing it in like, like, it, like it's been doing. Mean, you, uh, you can manage it. Thank you. We recently received a windfall of money from the state um, that I guess they just decided they were going to keep for a while and just give it back to us. Um, you know, that was a perfect opportunity to invest in ourselves, meaning we, we've been told there's a structural deficit. I know that is a common thing that happens in government, but it was an opportunity for us to be able to, to close that gap a little bit so we don't have to borrow money and shuffle it around. When the 2% circuit breaker kicks in in the next few years, we're going to feel that pinch. There's no question about that. And I think that's an excellent law. Now, what I see happening now is, though, all the government entities are lobbying and working really hard out there to find other ways to make up that difference. What we can do, though, is that look how we're spending what we have. We shouldn't just always seek tax increases because things keep going up. There's no question costs go up. But that doesn't mean we have to run out and just start taxing more and more and more. Uh, it was said earlier that, you know, there's a lot of fixed incomes here in this community. And at some point, you know, when, when things get going and we do have business and, and more activity here that will get more taxpayers, what startles me is at one time we had a population of 72,000. Now we're down to 56,000. Yet, and it wouldn't even be that high if, if Mayor Jenkins hadn't annexed the east end of town and we weren't counting the federal prisoners, it would be even worse than that. And what bothers me with that scenario is, all the rest of us that have been here all this time continue to take a bigger and bigger piece of that burden. And it's just going to continue if we keep spending at the rate we're spending. We need to be progressive and we need to do those things to build the infrastructure, but we have to do it in a fiscally responsible way. I will submit a balanced budget every year. I will work to uh, eliminate the structural deficit and we'll still continue to move forward. Thank you. There's, there's no question that the um, city is in financial it's in financial hardship, but in, to be fair to the mayor, there, it's hard to say how you would exactly repair that if you don't know what's broken. I, I don't see what's coming across the mayor's desk. He, only his eyes see that. City council has a big part in that also, and I would I'd place some of the burden back on the city council. But one of the things I would would like to bring your attention is. Again, back to where the police station's at. We're blowing $91,200 a year to keep our police force in that building. We own City Hall. That's a $91,200 debt every year we could avoid and be putting back into projects to help the community. Another thing is outsourcing some of these jobs, such as the road construction job out here on 7th Street to a company from Illinois. I mean, 
there's you can't tell me there's not a local company here in Terre Haute that can do that. That's keeping the tax dollar right back here in Bible County or back here in Terre Haute, where we can it can be used for other things. Uh, I would I would move the police department back into City Hall. I would I would build onto it if I had to, but I would I would take away this debt of ninety one thousand dollars a year, and we'd find something better to do for it for the people of Terre Haute. I'd like for each of you to ask yourself a simple question. The progress that you've seen, the amount of projects that, that we've been undertaking over the last three years, do you think that's from us not being able to manage our money well, or from us being able to manage our money in a very efficient and productive manner? At some point in time, you've got to come to grips with the fact that this is not because we're squandering money, it's simply because we're making very good use of your money. I encourage you to do the research. In two minutes, I can't explain to you how the State Board of Accounts can clearly show you that we are in far better financial position than we were three years ago. Immensely better financial position, not only in general fund balance, but cash position, debt. Uh, we have the city of Terre Haute still has not borrowed money. Do you realize for the city of Terre Haute to borrow money Five of your nine city councilmen would have to vote for that? Ask them what they voted for us to go into debt for. Not a single thing. Yes, the sanitary district is has debt and has had for 40 years. We've had over 21 bond issues. And, and I understand that people say, well, we need to wait. We had cars falling through the streets into our sewers, folks. The only advance... If you want to talk about expense and poor use of city finances, delay projects. The only thing delay will do is cost us more money. We've got to get caught up, and I can prove to you, if you're interested, that our financial position has never been better. Well, it'd be nice to have your cake and eat it too, because you know tonight we've got a rosy picture of the economic situation that the city is in. However, when the city controller, the past three years, have been saying that we've got structural deficits, uh, we're spending more money than what we're taking in, uh, all this has been reported in the Tribune Star and their quotes from Mr. Long. Uh, if that's the case, I mean, which which one do you want us to believe? Uh, <laughs> You know, are we having problems, or or is it rosy? Is it 117 million dollars in debt, or is it 85 million dollars in debt? Uh, you know, no, the city's not in debt, but everybody in this room is to the sanitation district. Uh, in order to make Terre Haute grow, too, we have to watch the tip districts. I would venture to say that we're probably the only city in the world that gave Walmart a tip district, uh, a multi-billion-dollar company, and we say, well, we'll take your minimum wage jobs and we don't want any tax dollars, but we'll provide you fire protection, police protection, roads, uh, and everything else that, that goes on out there. I mean, it's it's just silly. And then again, you know, paying the police department over $100,000 a year for, for a building that leaks, that has black mold in the basement, that is not acceptable uh, conditions for them. But the bank still owns the uh, west side of the building, which controls the heat. In the wintertime, your police officers have to carry in space heaters to stay warm in that building because they shut the heat off on Friday. Uh, you know, with the 2% circuit breaker tax that's coming, and then again, you know, Mr. Long stating that, well, we're going to take the wait and see attitude. We're not going to do anything for the future, except for if the state doesn't help us, we're going to start having to cut services. Well, folks, cutting services means laying off policemen, firemen, streets. Parks, uh, that, you know. So, are we in an economic rosy picture like the mayor wants to predict or say that we are? I, I just don't see it, and the future says that we're not. Thank you.